The Cooler Master Hyper 212 is one of the most popular budget coolers of all time. But is it still the king? The Cooler Master Hyper 212 has been the most popular cooler to recommend on any PC forum. Whenever you go on a PC forum and somebody posts a video of their shiny new PC, that has a stock cooler, everybody will go, oh, it's a beautiful build, but you're still using your stock cooler. Why would you do that? Buy something new. And when the person will ask, well, what do I buy? The first recommendation and pretty much the only recommendation always will be the Cooler Master Hyper 212. Is this still the king though? Is this still the best recommendation to give? Is there a contender to the throne? Now in this test today, I'll be looking at two coolers. The first one is obviously the Cooler Master 212. Now, just to be clear, I am using the 212X and not the Evo. I know that the Evo is the really, really popular one, but they're essentially the same cooler, except the 212X is like the newer version with a slightly better fan on it. And um, the competing cooler will be the Cryo Rig H7. Now the Cryorig H7 has gotten amazing reviews across the board, but is it as good as the Cooler Master 212? Now the reason that I didn't use the 212 Evo for this test is because price-wise, the Evo is quite a bit cheaper than the H7. By quite a bit cheaper, I mean it's like 22 to 24 dollars depending on where you get it, as opposed to the 30 odd dollars for the H7. Um, the 212X is exactly the same price. Now with that lengthy introduction out the way, let's have a look at the coolers. And here is the Hyper 212X. With its grey and blue fan, it really isn't the best looking cooler on the market. When looking at the top, its kind of plain aluminium face doesn't help much either and it doesn't look great in a build. Here's the mounting hardware, it's got a nice sturdy metal backplate. To be honest, it's really difficult to mount on an AMD system and it was an infuriating process. It's a bit easier on, on Intel systems though. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at the Cryo Rig H7. And this is the Cryo Rig H7. With its black on white, it's a good looking cooler that fits in pretty much anywhere. Let's have a look at its mounting hardware. It's really easy to mount on both AMD and Intel systems and it really wins there. This is its backplate installed. It looks fairly sturdy. It is plastic. Now that we've sized the gladiators up individually, let's chuck them into a ring together and scrutinize them closely together. And here first we have the two boxes that the coolers came in to let you know that they both, well, come in boxes. The unpacking experience is pretty good for both the coolers. Mmm, with the two standing side by side, you can see the cryo rig is clearly the better looking of the two. With its sleek black and white dress, it'll fit in anywhere. When they stand side by side, you can see the cryo rig is a bit shorter, which means it can fit into those tight spaces. Uh, with it being a bit fatter though, it has a bit more fin weight than the Cooler Master does. Here you look at the actual fin array, whereas the cryo rig is dimpled, which apparently helps airflow, the Cooler Master is just straight fins. When looking at the RAM clearance, you can see that the Cooler Master isn't very good and the DOM plats didn't fit in the first row. Whereas with the Cryo Rig, they do, it's got plenty of clearance. Here's just a look of the two coolers in the system. And yes, the Cooler Master kind of takes away from the look and the Cryo Rig, rig looks great. Now that we've kind of finished our overview of all of the products in question, let's have a look at the actual systems that I tested them in. When looking at the two systems, I just want to again comment on the fact that the cryo rig was easy to mount in both the Intel and AMD systems, where the Cooler Master was an absolute pain to mount on the AMD rig. Now let's have a look at the performance of the Evo versus the H7. Now, the first figures I'm going to be looking at have to do with the actual Intel system, because I don't need to explain them that much. Now I was running a 7600K as you saw at 4.5 gigahertz for the test and I was using Ida 64's system stability test and um, well they performed pretty closely the uh, Hyper 212X was doing about 64 degrees Celsius this was in quite a cold room though and uh, the H7 was hovering around 67, 68 
So yes, the Cooler Master performed a bit better there. And I have to admit, it was actually quite a bit quieter as well. And I think this is all down to the actual fan. I mean, obviously the quietness is down to the fan, but the temperatures as well. Because the fan on the 212X can actually ramp up to about 2000 RPM, whereas the, um, whereas the H7 is limited to about 1500 RPM. So there's a lot more headroom available in the, in the, in the Evo. Um, so I think when it comes to straight out performance, the Evo is definitely your better bet. Um, when moving over to the actual AMD system, things were a bit more interesting because for some reason the AMD motherboard that I was using, which is the Asus X370 Strix, was playing quite weirdly with the fan profile on the, on the cooler and I didn't actually do anything to the fan profile because I didn't want to affect the results in any way. Um, but when running the actual uh, 1700X at a stock to, uh, at, at a stock clock, I was getting about um, I was getting about 71 degrees on the H7. I was getting way lower than that on the on the Hyper 212. But where it got really interesting was the Hyper 212 was giving me around 68, 69 degrees when I overclocked the CPU to to 3.8 gigahertz. But when I was running the H7 in the system. It, it couldn't deal with the extra, extra thermal load of overclocking it from 3.5 to 3.8. So the system actually had to shut itself down to stop it from overheating completely. And I was looking at the fan speed the whole time the test was running. And it was weird because the motherboard wasn't really responding to the increase in temperatures. So the fan speed stayed pretty much the same when it went from 30 degrees up to about 60. Then it started ramping it up from a thousand RPM. It started ramping it up a bit. But by the time that the fan went to its full speed, the system was already at over 80 degrees and it was well on its way to the point where it actually shut down. So I think you could have the cooler perform a bit better if you play around with, with the fan profiles. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to test each of the coolers in its stock configuration. Um, so yeah, the actual TDP of the 1700X at 3.8 gigahertz was just too much for the H7 to handle. Which is a bit weird, because when I looked on the internet to see if these results were consistent with what everybody else was getting, they didn't seem to be. Um, it seemed that people were getting different results and that they were having way lower temperatures on their H7. Then what I did is I took the cooler off and I reseated it and I was getting the exact same result. I don't know what was going on, to be honest. And um, yeah, so I think when you're looking at actually buying the H7 for a AMD-based system, I think that's something to take into account. You're definitely gonna have to go into the BIOS and change the fan profiles for that one. But it does mean that the, the, the cooler is gonna be louder. Uh, the thing with it being louder, though, is that the Hyper 212 is definitely a quieter cooler. Um, when, even when the fan is at 2000 RPM as opposed to the 1500 odd RPM of the H7, it's still quieter and you're getting better performance. Um, so on an Intel system, I think there's not much in it between the two coolers, but for an AMD system you should definitely be careful. And with that, I think it's time for a conclusion. Now first off, let's talk about the hallowed Cooler Master 212. Now, the thing is, the Tula Cooler Master 212 performs quite well for its price. It's got a really quiet fan and temperatures were fairly decent. Um, it's just a pretty terrible looking cooler, to be honest. I know it's down to personal preference, but I just don't like the look of it. And it's also a complete pain in the ass to mount on an AMD system. So if you are going the Ryzen direction, just keep that in mind. It's going to be hugely difficult to mount and you can potentially damage the fins on the cooler. Um, on an Intel system, it's not as much of a problem. Now let's have a look at the H7. The H7 is a great cooler. It looks the part. It really is a great looking cooler and it looks amazing in any system you put it in. Um, it just isn't as good performance-wise as the 212X. The fan is louder and it's not as powerful, so it means that it can't deal with the same thermal thermal load as the 
as, as the 212X can. And I think it's very close to being able to deal with it, because if you look at the AM Intel tests, sorry, not the AMD tests, if you look at the Intel tests, their, their performance was fairly close. There was about three degrees in it. Um, so yes, I think for an Intel system, you could go for the H7 purely for an aesthetic reason. Um, I mean, I would and actually have. I think when comparing the H7 to the actual 212 EVO, the story is a bit different, but that's not what we're doing here today. Is the 212 EVO still king? I think when it comes from a purely performance perspective, it's doing really well for itself, and I think it actually merits being tested against even more coolers in the future, which is something I'll do. Um, but to be honest, when it comes to the ease of mounting, the looks, I think I'll just go with an H7. And then if you have a bit of money left in the end of the day, I think I'd put a better fan on it, which is something I'm going to do a video on very soon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you didn't like it, subscribe so that you can hate on all my videos as they come out. Sounds like a really good idea. Anyway, thank you very much. Bye-bye.